Okay. So thanks everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. I'm Kelsey Wenzel for the, from the Entrepreneurship Center at Madison College. Uh, thanks for joining us for today's webinar with Brian Lee. Uh, he will be talking um, about advertising on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Brian Lee is one of our entrepreneur in residence at Madison College, as well as the president of an advertising and social media agency in Madison. So as we get started, we ask that everybody keep their microphones off just to ensure we don't have any extra noise going on. Um, there will be time for some questions at the end, so you can ask um, those at the end. Otherwise, you can throw them in the chat as the webinar goes on and we'll keep an eye on that. Um, and then we will also be recording today's webinar and sending it out to those who registered. So if you want to rewatch it later or maybe send it to somebody who might find it beneficial, uh, you can do so. So with that, Brian, I'm going to hand it off to you just to make sure that we utilize um, all your time. Thanks, Kelsey, and thanks everyone for being here today. We're here to talk about advertising on Facebook and LinkedIn, and I was excited to talk about myself, but then Kelsey gave a nice bio. Um, I would classify myself as a serial entrepreneur. I run uh, multiple businesses, and I've been teaching social media and marketing at Mass College for about 10 years. And as Kelsey mentioned, I also serve as an entrepreneur in residence. So I help people build their businesses, and our services are free to the community. So if you are thinking of starting a business or are stuck where you are and need some help moving forward, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to help. I'm also right now... Uh, working on the fourth edition of my book, Using Social Media for Business. It is a pain to update that book on a regular basis, but that's how much social media changes. And I bring that up because the, the slides I'm gonna show you today on how to advertise on Facebook and LinkedIn, I'm gonna show you the principles and you will be able to execute all this, but just know that you know, six months from now, a year from now, Facebook and LinkedIn may change some of the uh, processes for advertising, but the, the premises will still be the same. So you will still be able to do it in the future. That's what I wanna make sure that uh, you get out of this. So it's gonna be, uh, you might think this is a little weird, but I wanna start with some of the foundational principles of uh, marketing before we get into the advertising. I think that will I'm benefit you be a lot if we there, start with yeah. that. <laughs> Hey, that's okay. I thought I turned the volume down, but I always do. Hoping everyone can uh, mute themselves while I give this presentation, please. Yeah, you know, I, you can have like long holders. I mean, <laughs> Kelsey, can you mute everyone for me? Got it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, so again, we're going to start with the foundational principles of marketing. Then we're going to move on to how to advertise on these platforms. And um, as Kelsey mentioned, feel free to ask questions throughout the chat. Um, based on how Microsoft Teams works, I am unable to see the chat while I present. So Kelsey will monitor that for me. So Kelsey, at any time, don't hesitate to just uh, interrupt if anyone has any questions. Don't hesitate. Perfect. Sounds good. So here's a model of the consumer adoption process. It's how a stranger, uh, a person goes from being a stranger to becoming your customer. And there's many versions of this. This is the one I happen to like. So the first step is that people have to be aware that you exist, that your company exists, that your product exists, your service exists before they can buy from you, right? So this is why brands spend a lot of time and effort on this step. These are, this is the resulting of uh, big PR campaigns, big advertising campaigns. It's to build awareness. Moving on from that, you have to make sure that the people you target actually have interest in what you sell or have interest in what you sell right now. So, for example, um, Harley Davidson, they, they make motorcycles. I am aware that they exist. I'm aware of their products, but I'm not interested in riding a motorcycle. So that's where I would fall off here. So it's important to target people with interest. And fortunately, social media makes it easier to target people with likely interest in what you sell. Moving on from there is evaluation. This is where people are looking at testimonials, reviews. They're doing price comparisons. They're asking their friends for recommendations or referrals, right? I'm sure anyone out there who has ever purchased anything on Amazon, you've probably looked at the reviews at some point in helping you to make that decision. That's part of the evaluation phase. 
Moving on is trial. This is an optional step, but it's more prevalent if the, something you sell is more expensive or has a longer term contract. So let me give you two examples. Before you buy a car, what do you do? You take it for a test drive. Before you join a gym for a year, you do a one week free trial membership, right? So are there ways that you can offer a sample or shorter version of your product or service that can allow people to try it? Then finally, after people go through all these steps, then they become your customer. That's when they adopt. Then what happens is they go all the way back to the beginning. But at this point, now that they've gone through all these steps, you just have to maintain awareness. That's called top of mind awareness. But you want people to be repeat buyers of you. This is why you constantly see ads for Coke and Pepsi and Pizza Hut and Taco Bell and everything, right? You've eaten there before. You've gone through these steps. They just want to make sure you remember them. That's the top of mind awareness. And because of all these steps, you may have heard the phrase, the best customer is a repeat customer. That's because they've gone through these steps and you don't have to use all that effort again. You just have to do step one, the maintaining top of mind awareness. And part of that comes through content marketing. So I have a full one hour presentation on content marketing. So I'm, I'm going to just give you three minutes today, but it helps set up some of the things that we're going to do on LinkedIn. So the Content Marketing Institute is not an accredited institution. It's a for-profit business. I just happen to like their definition of content marketing. So if you take a look at the words here in orange bold, creating and distributing relevant and valuable content. OK, so this is content that you can create yourself and I'll show you how to do that in the next couple of slides. Then you're going to push it out there. You're going to distribute it. And you got to make sure that the content you create <clears throat> is considered relevant, and valuable to the end audiences. So what do you do use content marketing for? It's a multi purpose strategy. For example, you can position yourself as an expert in a certain field using content marketing. As I mentioned before, it's to maintain top of mind awareness. You can also use it for inbound marketing. This is where you put content on your own website, and when people search for it, they come to your website. That's the inbound marketing. Also, you can use it for outbound marketing. And one example is going to be the LinkedIn advertising we're talking. We're going to talk about in a few slides. And also, it helps for your search engine optimization. So this is where you rank in a Google search result, right? You want to be on page one at minimum, and then you want to be on the top of page one. And how you do that, the main variable that Google looks at is how much content you put on your website on a regular basis. If you never update your website, Google may mistakenly think it's abandoned and push you down. But you're, if you're constantly putting new content on your website, it, it pushes you up. This is why news sites always rank number one, two, three, four, five, because they're putting out 50 articles a day. So content marketing is very important for SEO. This illustration here, I want to explain what that is. So a former client of mine, he thought it was a waste of time to do an arm curl because you only work one muscle and that's your bicep. Instead, he would say, do a bent over palms up roll because you work your back, triceps, biceps, and chest muscle with one movement. And so that's my philosophy. If you only had time to do one thing in the grand scheme of PR and social media marketing and so forth, I recommend you do content marketing because it covers so many different things. OK, again, if you only had time to do one thing, it should be content marketing because you can do so much with it. Ten years ago, we weren't doing that much content marketing with our clients. And now we automatically do it with every one of my clients because it's that important. It's this content that you can create. Here are just some examples, OK? For example, blogs, those are the big thing. Those are the most likely forms of content that you might be creating, but it can also be a case study. It could certainly be videos. Videos are very prevalent in a lot of social media channels out there. It can be infographics. That's where you explain something here using graphics. And where you're going to put this content is your website. Because again, you want to use it for inbound marketing purposes, and then you can also push it out there for outbound marketing purposes. OK, so again, if you have control of your website, that's where you should put your content somewhere on your website. And it doesn't literally have to be called blog for that personal training client of mine. We called it fitness and nutrition tips. And so that was his blog section. Another name you could call it um, news and updates, for example.
And then how do you create content? Here are some just general guidelines. These are not like written in stone, not the letter of the law, but just some things that might be helpful for you if you're getting started on content marketing. Blog articles, 250 words is typically good. You're going to forget everything you learned in high school English about writing these long expository paragraphs. These days, one to three sentences is the right length for paragraphs. One to three sentences, tops. Um, white papers are these long technical documents. They used to be about 20 pages long, not anymore. Two to four pages include a lot of graphics, charts, etc. in them. Presentations like this one, four to 12 slides is enough. Infographics, like I told you, you don't need to have a graphic design degree or background. There's tools out there like Pictochart or Canva that you can use to create these infographics. Videos, uh, more of the long form type videos that I'm thinking about will be housed on YouTube. And they're going to be about 30 to 60 seconds long. Again, these are different from the short form videos that are prevalent in tools in, like TikTok. Listicle. I hate to say it, but people are so lazy these days they can't even read full sentences. A listicle is an article in bullet point form, and these are very popular. So you write eight to 12 bullet points about something. And podcasts, I just actually taught a, a master college class two weeks ago on podcasting. And the 20 to 45 minutes is typically the right length um, these days for a podcast. Of course, you can go shorter, you can go longer, but that's about the sweet spot for a podcast. Okay. Now, let's sort of get back into the point of this discussion. Outbound marketing, which is what we're going to do with LinkedIn and Facebook. You're going to take your message and find the person you want to target and put your message right in front of them. And a lot of times that message is going to be embedded within your content that you create. That's why I led this presentation off with the content marketing section. Now, typically what is happening is your audience that you're reaching out and notice the word I'm using the word audience, not customer. Your audience could literally be a prospective customer, but it could be someone else. It could be a, it could be someone that is the, the buyer or the decision maker, but not the end user. So, for example, if you sell something to children, but it's the parents that buy that product, that's your target audience, even though the end user is the child. OK, that's why we use the term audience. Sometimes this person is not even thinking about buying your product. It just hasn't crossed their mind or they're completely unaware of your product or company. So this is why you do outbound marketing is to generate that awareness. So here's an example. I am familiar with Igloo coolers, OK? They obviously make multiple types of coolers, including the Mini Mate. I did not realize until they put an advertisement in my newsfeed in Facebook that they made a mini cooler with Baby Yoda on it. And being a fan of the Mandalorian, I couldn't wait to buy that. So that worked. See, I was aware of Igloo, the company, but I was unaware of the Baby Yoda mini cooler. And so they got me. That worked, and I bought it. So outbound marketing, thinking about that. So well, now let's talk about LinkedIn. If you haven't been on LinkedIn, it's a business professional platform. OK, you're going to use it for professional purposes, branding purposes, not so much social purposes. I like it for um, following up in real life networking. We also it's also a very strong HR platform, so you can use it to uh, find candidates and find jobs as well. Just so you understand the parlance. When you log into LinkedIn, either on a desktop computer or your mobile device, you see a news feed. And the posts you see in the news feed are called updates. That's what they call them, updates. So the people that you follow, that you're connected to on LinkedIn, you will see their posts, their updates in your feed. Now, LinkedIn was smart enough to say, let's make it a way that you can buy your way into someone else's news feed. So that's what I'm going to talk about, the LinkedIn sponsored update. So again, this is just looks like a normal update. The only difference is it says the word promoted right there in light gray letters. OK, so you can push your content directly into news feeds of anyone on LinkedIn. And what has been most successful on LinkedIn when you do these sponsored updates is to push relevant and valuable content into the recipient's news feeds. 
So rather than put an, uh, an ad that just says buy from me, where that will be ignored, if instead you say, hey, here's an, a how-to guide on how to do something, or here's an article on 10 steps for X, Y, and Z, people are more likely to click that. And when they click on that, they go to your website and now they're in your funnel. So I'll say that again. What will bring you more most success on LinkedIn is if you push content into other people's news feeds, not just an ad that says buy from me. So again, that's why I wanted to show you that content marketing is because you're going to develop these articles. You're going to post them on your website and then share them on your LinkedIn company page. And then you're going to push that out there on LinkedIn. And so here are the steps for doing this. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, this is a B2B marketing tool. So if your business sells to other businesses, this is a really good way of getting leads. We do this for um, almost all of our B2B clients, LinkedIn advertisements. So first, you have to have a LinkedIn company page to do these sponsored updates. And again, you should be posting your content from your website onto your LinkedIn company page. And that'll be more clear in, uh, in a couple slides from now. On the top right, when you log into LinkedIn, there's a big advertise button, and then that will take you to a campaign manager. And then when you're there, you're going to either create an ad account if you haven't started one yet, or access an existing ad account, and then click create campaign. From there, you're going to create a campaign group. <clears throat> so this could be just a series of different uh, related campaigns. So I'm going to be targeting um, moms in Madison. Okay, this is my campaign here. Okay, so that might be my group. And then the schedule. You're going to determine the start and end dates, and I always make sure to put an end date or it will just charge you continuously. OK, make sure to pick an end date for your ads. Next. Every social media platform does the same thing when you advertise. It will ask you what is your objective? So here are the objectives on LinkedIn. You're likely going to pick brand awareness. Remember why? You're, you need to generate awareness before people can even buy from you. Uh, another one that I would typically consider using is website visits. That's where you're trying to get people to actually go to your website, but the brand awareness usually is the same thing. They see your content and they click on it because they like it and they go to your website. Now, you are going to set up the ad by first picking the demographics. Who's your target audience? So across all social media platforms, you're going to do the same thing. Here we start with where where is your audience located? Is Are they in Madison? Are they in Wisconsin? Are they in the Midwest? You can pick one or more locations. You can also exclude locations as well. So that's important to know. Then down here, you can further classify. You can choose industry, so healthcare, nonprofit, manufacturing. You can pick company size, zero to 10, 10,000 or more. But here's my favorite part. You can pick people based on job title. So with a former health tech client of mine, their decision maker was a hospital CIO, chief information officer. How would you target a CIO? Do you wait in the hospital lobby and hope he or she comes out for lunch and get up, right? But LinkedIn allows you to target people directly based on their title. So what you do is you type in the title and then LinkedIn says, yes, we have that in our database. We also have these related titles, as you can see here. Um, and then we said, sure, we'll select them. So we also selected assistant chief information officer, director of IT and other related titles. How nice is that? If you've ever done sales or business development, you know typically you have to go through a lot of gatekeepers, right? You're meeting with non-decision makers and trying to work your way up to the final person. But here on LinkedIn, you can go directly to that person. That's why I really, really like it as a B2B marketing tool. So think about if you're a B2B business, who do you sell to? What's their title? And you can reach them that way. LinkedIn is a little uh, messed up in terms of how it uh, lays out the order of things. The, at this point, it asks you to choose the ad format, but then it won't let you to, to design the ad until later. So I typically will do a single image ad. It's just the easiest. I'm not having people try to go through a photo album. I want them to understand that the content is what's relevant to them. 
So single image ad is what we run 99% of the time. Now there's multiple ways that you can develop your budget in LinkedIn. Here's the way I like is what's known as a CPM bin. This is means how much you're, you're willing to pay for 1000 impressions. So, you know, pairs of eyes on your ad. So it will even tell you how much you need to bid right here. You can see. LinkedIn says you need to bid about one hundred sixty one dollars to get your ad shown on our network. And you're thinking, geez, one hundred sixty one bucks. That is extraordinarily inexpensive, folks. $161 for a thousand views from CIOs and hospitals. I will gladly take that. You cannot get that kind of uh, cost anywhere else in any other medium. OK, so, you know, I hate using that word, but dare I say it, it's very cheap. $161. We've gone up to campaigns in the 200s. That's still super cheap. OK, again, these are qualified decision makers in your region, industry, company size, title, etc. So that's a very, very good value. On the right hand side here, you'll see what your estimated results are. So you can see how many impressions you might get, how many clicks you might get. OK. And what's nice is that the clicks don't cost anything more. You're just paying on impressions. So, so you'll get um, you'll get the views, but then you also get some clicks and that's what you ultimately want, right? So even if someone doesn't click on it, they become aware of your brand product or service, which is good. But then if they click on to it, that's even better because now they're in your website and they're in your ecosystem. Now, for some reason, LinkedIn goes back into helping you create your ad and there's two things you can do. You can create new or browse existing content. So my hope is that you'll have posted your content onto your LinkedIn company page because then you'll click here browse existing content and then it'll go to your LinkedIn company page and then you can select articles you've already published. So here, for example, here's uh, the future of marketing. So these are these are things to expect in 2023. That's something that somebody might be interested in clicking on, right? But if you don't have that content, you can create a new ad. And when you click on that, it takes you to this screen where you fill it in. But then again, this just looks like a normal ad. It's not a relevant or valuable piece of content. So thus, the chances of someone click on this is much lower. That's why, again, putting a piece of content out to these uh, target audiences of yours will be much better in terms of helping you generate leads. You'll also be able to view the statistics behind your ads. So for example, here are the companies. So I can see the exact companies of uh, where people have worked or work that have seen my ads. So in this healthcare case, you can see uh, University of Chicago, Northwestern Memorial Hospital, et cetera. I can also see their job function. Some are in operations, some are in sales, some are in finance. So there's a lot more statistics, uh, sorry, statistics like this and analytics in your um, ads. You can take a look at this and say, wow, geez, I'm reaching a lot of people that I shouldn't be reaching. Well, then you need to go back and adjust your ads. The thing I want to show you on LinkedIn is the, the premium feature set. There's actually multiple versions. The only one I want to talk about here today is Sales Navigator Core. So this does cost quite a bit of money. It's 80 bucks a month, but it gives you advanced features within LinkedIn. For example, you can save lead lists of more up to 10,000 names that you've uh, gathered from LinkedIn. You can also do things like set job change alerts. So you're tracking certain people and when they change jobs, LinkedIn will notify you that they change jobs. You can also send in mails to anyone. So LinkedIn right now doesn't allow you to send in mails to anyone. That's their direct messaging system. But with Sales Navigator Core, you can. So if you need to send an email directly to somebody, you can do that through this in mail. And they boast a pretty good open rate. 85% is quite large. Normally 10 to 20% in another system would be considered very good. Um, and you do get a better response rate if you personalize it. So you can see here, this is an in-mail I received from somebody. He's trying to sell me his graphic design services. Um, <clears throat> 
but you can see he didn't personalize it at all. Hi, I'm reaching out to dot, dot, dot. He didn't even put Brian. Uh, and then he talks about himself this whole time without ever saying what he can do for my business. So I deleted it after I, of course, screen captured this so I could show you uh, what not to do. But again, if, if if you're looking to directly communicate with people on LinkedIn that you're not connected to, you can use LinkedIn in mail, but you do have to, again, pay to do that. So that's another advertising feature of LinkedIn. Brian, we have one question. It says, can we target other companies? So unfortunately, LinkedIn does not allow you to specifically reach out to, you know, uh, Epic Systems or UW Madison, but you can generally get enough of the um, the variables surrounding that company that you would get them. You know, you would say company 10,000 or more in healthcare, right? And that would allow you to basically reach that that specific company. It just won't allow you to specifically reach out to that company. Hope that makes sense. Any other questions on LinkedIn before I move to Facebook? Okay, yeah, they great. Said, sorry, they said oh. yes, thank you for you answering your question. Oh, great. And keep them coming, folks. Keep them coming. I know I speak relatively quickly, too, so I'm happy to go back and cover any points. So, um, social media, in my professional opinion, is best used on the organic level. This is the everyday using of social media, not pain level. The everyday organic use should be for customer retention. But most people and brands spend too much time focusing on customer acquisition. So let me give you an illustrating example of why this is wrong to think about customer acquisition on the organic level. If you're a gym and you post on your Facebook page, join today, what do you think that post does? Do you think you're going to get any new members from a post that says join today? No. You know why? Because everyone who likes your page is already a member, right? So you got to think of it from a customer retention standpoint. And customer retention is very good. Look at this stat, first of all. 80% of your future profits will come from 20% of your existing customers. So it's really good to be sitting on your pod of existing customers and keep selling to them. Look at all the things you can do with this focus. Upsell. Hey, buy something more expensive next time. Resell. Buy it again. Loyalty marketing. See you next week. Referrals. Tell your uncle about us. Customer service, what can we do for you? And research. So those are all really good things that come out of a customer retention focus. That's the organic use of social media, especially with a tool like Facebook. However, I want to show you how to advertise on Facebook. So that's the customer acquisition look. And unlike LinkedIn, which is more B2B focused here on link, uh, Facebook, we're going to do B to C. So if you're a business that sells to consumers, this is going to be a better tool for you than LinkedIn would be. Um, like a lot of social media platforms, you can make highly targeted ads, and they do come in several formats, which I'll show you in a bit. This is an example of an ad that came into my news feed. As you can see here, it just says sponsored right here in light gray letters. So oh, first of all, I want to show you how a, a, a Facebook ad campaign is set up um, graphically. So first you have your overall campaign. Then your campaign will be divided into ad sets. So this campaign might be uh, you're a restaurant and you want to increase business, okay? This ad set can be uh, divided um, based on schedule. So you might be doing um, let's say Cyber Monday deals. So that is one ad set. So that's running from November 21st through 27th or something like that. Then this ad set is for your remaining December holiday sales. So you're running this ad from, you know, December 10th through 25th, you know. So schedule could be one way to divide these ads out. It could be on targeting. So you might be targeting one audience here you might be targeting another audience here so that's how these ad sets can be uh, created and then within each ad set you're going to have one or more ads one or more ads within each ad set 
So there's multiple ways to create Facebook ads. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way, but there's way, way more advanced ways that would take me a full hour just to show you how to set it up. Because uh, Meta, which now owns Facebook, has gotten ridiculously complicated for no good reason. So click on this link, uh, facebook.com slash ads manager, and it will take you to your ads area. And then you're going to click on create campaign. So again, that's this. And the first thing you're going to be asked to do is create your objective, just like in LinkedIn and just like in every other platform. So these top three are the uh, ones that you'll likely ever use. Awareness, we, we know about that now, right? Building awareness. Engagement, this is to um, try to get more people to attend your Facebook event or sign up for your Facebook event or like your page. And the traffic is to send people to your website. Leads is to get people to fill out a lead form, typically. App promotions to have someone download your app. And sales is to like get someone to call you. So again, these three are more the most likely with awareness being the probably 80% of the time you're going to run awareness ads. First thing to do is set up your campaign budget. Um, I would start with $5 a day. That's typically a good amount. You can certainly increase this, but start with $5 a day, a day and then look at what it gets you. You'll see that in the next slide, um, what $5 a day will get you. Up here, advanced campaign budget. I like it. It's fine. So if you're running multiple ad sets, it will adjust. Facebook will adjust for you. If one ad set's doing really well, it may allocate more money to it. I think that's fine. So I typically will leave this on. So let's say you're a wedding planner based in Madison, Wisconsin. And you want to target people on Facebook. So first of all, location. Here I'm picking Madison, Wisconsin, and a 15 mile radius of Madison, Wisconsin. Now, sure, I'm a wedding planner. I can plan a wedding in Green Bay. I can plan a wedding in Milwaukee, but you know what? All my contacts and relationships are here in the Madison area. So that's why I'm picking a 15 mile radius of Madison. So where are your audiences located? This is where you'll pick. You can pick Madison, you can pick the state of Wisconsin, you can pick the entire United States. But just know as you enlarge the space, your ad costs are gonna be a lot higher to reach everyone within that geographic region. So within this region, what do I wanna target? Women ages 22 to 35 who are engaged. Does that make sense as me as a wedding planner that I wanna target engaged women ages 22 to 35, right? Obviously, I can change this um, age range if I wanted to, but I'm just illustrating this for an example. Just so you know, there's a lot more uh, demographic details you can target here. You can target interests, for example, um, like wine or dining out. You can target people with kids um, in certain age groups, so like kids that are under, under 10, high school, older kids. Um, political leanings, but not strictly political. Um, those are types of things that you can do to further uh, target your, um, uh, tailor your tar ads. Now, remember what I said way at the beginning of this presentation, that you're trying to find people that would likely have interest in what you sell, right? So that they would move on to the next step, which is evaluation. So the better you can uh, describe your audience, the more likely that you have success. Hope that makes sense. Here you'll see that uh, I define my audience really well. Here's my estimated daily reach. Now, Facebook requires you to have a page created before you can run ads. So you will have to create a business page. Also note that Meta owns Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and other things. So if you want to advertise on Instagram, you actually do that through Facebook as well. So if you only want to advertise on Instagram, you still have to come here. So I actually should have called this presentation Facebook and Instagram advertising because you do that all through here. Um, on the left side, this is the top of the screen that you're going to see. The next screen is that this is where you create your ad. So you can upload an image or videos and you can have a single image or a carousel of images. And then when you scroll down more, then you see this screen. 
This is where you're going to fill in the text of your ad, add a button if you want, the headline. Um, I do recommend that you add the button, like learn more. It's really funny is that this whole ad is clickable, but people always gravitate toward a button. So always add a button. On the right hand side, you'll see what your ad looks like in real time. It's a preview of your ad. So once you add the image and start typing the text, it'll show you. And then it'll show you what your ad looks like in all the formats within the Facebook and Instagram spaces. So if you don't want your ad to appear in some of these spaces, you can turn that off. So for example, if you don't want your ad to show up in Facebook Marketplace or Stories or wherever, you can turn that off. So that's the placement of your ads. Um, then all you have to do is hit submit and then Facebook will take up to 24 hours to review your ad to make sure it's fine. <clears throat> and I have never had to wait more than two hours. Max for an ad uh, to have been reviewed, so just keep that in mind. If you need to have your ad run in the next, you know, 30 minutes, that likely won't happen, but <clears throat> you at least you don't have to wait too long. Now, let me show you an example of an ad. This is about HelloFresh. It's a meal kit. So at the time when I saw this ad in my feed, I was not familiar with HelloFresh. So yes, checked off the first box, awareness. Now, would I have interest in this? Yes. You know why they targeted me? Because I also run a dining guide and I'm big into the food scene here in Madison. So it guessed that I would have some interest in something related to food. So yes, interest as well. Evaluation. How am I evaluating HelloFresh? Oh, right here. The meal delivery service that has millennials ditching takeout. Oh my gosh. If millennials are ditching takeout for HelloFresh, it must be really, really good. Okay, so that's the evaluation there. And then trial. How can I try this out? Right here. Eight meals free for new customers. Okay, so that's how I can try it. Now, one little thing about this ad. You can see here there's at the time I screen captured this 4,500 comments. And like the weirdo I am, I wanted to see why there's 4,500 comments on this ad. And I scrolled through them and almost every single one was about the exact same thing. Want to guess? This disgusting hand. Look at this thing. It's greasy, it's wrinkly, and it's touching my chicken. I do not want to eat this chicken after this really gross hand and this really gross looking thumb on it. So they did everything right except for this photo. OK, so make sure you don't have bad photos when you um, when you do your ads. OK, that really, really matters, especially when it's, it's edible. Uh, if you recall earlier, I said within each ad set, you're going to run one or more ads. And that's uh, under the principle of A, B or split testing. You want to run multiple versions of your ads against each other because you don't know which one will actually fare well, the best. Um, you're going to change things like headline text, images, etc. Because they're all basically theory, you know. You're just theorizing that this ad will do well, but you need to put it out there in the wild to see how it fares. So take a look at these two ads. Same text, same link, just a different image. Which ad did better? It's a 50-50 guess, but it turns out this ad did better by two to one over this ad. Is it because we used a real person instead of a cartoon? Maybe, but you just don't know this th these things, and this is why you run multiple versions of your ads. And so you're going to do this and then take a look at your ads um, You know, after a, a few days, maybe a week or so, and look at your statistics and then stop running these ads that aren't doing as well. OK, and just keep running these really better running ads. Um, do you know that it's very hard for any business page for um, to have your content, anything you post on your business page to be seen by your fans, the people who like your page? It's all due to Facebook's crazy algorithm, which I won't get into right now. Um, but just think uh, think about any time you've logged into Facebook. How uh, how frequently have you ever seen a pages post in your feed? 
Probably never, right? How often do you ever go to a Facebook's a fa a page's page, a business's page? Well, probably never, right? So that means you never see those posts. And so what do you have to do to get your post to be seen? You have to pay. This is why Facebook made several billion dollars in profit last quarter. It's because you have to pay to have your own content seen by your own fans. So the way to do that is, uh, like I said, boosting the post. So you'll post something. And it can be a post job event, etc. And you click on this boost post. And then you get to this screen where you can add a button and then you can pick your audience. Now, typically, if you're posting something on your Facebook page, that means you're talking to an audience that's already familiar with your brand product or service, right? So likely that means you want to boost this post to your people who like your page, as you can see down here at the bottom, right? You're talking to your uh, audience. Now, there can be circumstances where uh, something you post on Facebook on your page would make sense that other people see it. So you can pick a different audience here. As you can see here, you can choose a different audience. But again, remember, you're talking the way you probably have written that post to post on your Facebook page. You're using language that that someone already knows who you are. So keep that in mind as you boost this post over here. You can see your budget and estimated results as a, uh, for, for your budget. Now uh, I want to show you one additional thing is advanced Facebook advertising, something called a lookalike audience. So think about this. Wouldn't it be better if you could find someone just like your existing customers? Right? Wouldn't that mean that they're more likely to be interested in what you sell because you found someone that is exactly like your other customers? Um, and Facebook says yes. In fact, if you use a lookalike audience, it's they're more likely to um, it's more likely to have accuracy over than just choosing the demographics and interests that I showed you before, like wine lovers, right? So you're going to have to go to your meta business suite to create these audiences. And you'll go here, you'll click on audiences, then over here, create audience, look alike audience. And then you got to provide a data source. So it can be your Facebook page. So you tell Facebook, find people like the people who like my Facebook page. Find me another Brian Lee out there. Or if you have an email marketing list from your existing customer base, you can upload your emails and they'll find people like those people. Then you need to select an audience location and these are very broad on purpose. So likely you'll pick the United States and that's as small as you can go. And what you need to know is that once after you pick the United States later, when you select this audience, you can further hone it down by geo targeting your ads. So these are just people in the United States, but then you can further lay in and say, I only want people in Madison and Milwaukee within this audience. Then the final thing is you need to select the audience size. So the smaller the percent you go, the more accuracy you'll have in finding someone that's just like your existing customers, but the number will be smaller. On the other hand, the larger the percentage you go, the broader the match is going to be but you also have a larger audience size. So you'll need to probably play around with this a little bit. Then you click create. And then what you'll be able to do is that when you run an, a new ad campaign, you can select this as an audience. Here's my last slide, and I want to talk about some of the Facebook uh, benchmarks out there. Um, this is just a dose of reality. On the left side here, this table talks about click through rate. So how many people saw your ad divided by the um, amount of clicks? As you can see here, it's pretty bad. It's only 1%. So one out of 100 people will actually click your ad. But remember, a lot of times you're just doing this for awareness, okay? So these people are seeing your ad. They're becoming familiar with their brand product or service. They may not necessarily click on it, but you still get the benefit of awareness. Um, also, I think the other reason why these numbers are so low is people target the wrong people or their ad stinks. OK, so that's why their ad was not compelling enough to be even clicked on. On the right hand side here is cost per click. So this is how much you your budget divided by the amount of clicks you got. And again, these are relatively high, 
we typically can get below a dollar um, on the average cost per click on our ads. But you know, you can see here some are higher than others. So for example, insurance, that's a that's the highest cost per click here. It's because no one wants to click on an insurance ad. No offense to people who do insurance on this call. Um, you just got to have your manage your expectations that you know it's not something that people like to click on here. Uh, but clothes, yes, forty five cents average cost per click. So just want to give you these numbers. And again, um, we'll send out these slides uh, uh, afterward if anyone wants them. So you can reference these at any point, but just don't expect to come into Facebook and say, oh, I'm going to get, uh, you know, 90 percent click through rate. Just that's just not likely. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions right now on this. Uh, call and then if you have any questions you need to get going, um, don't hesitate to email me. This is my email address. There's no charge. You can ask me any questions based on today's presentation. I'm going to escape out of this so that I can see everyone. I see my good friend Jack Heineman on the call. Thank you, Brian. Uh, like Brian mentioned, if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or go ahead and add it in the chat. Looks like there is a question. Any advice on recruitment ads on Facebook or LinkedIn? Uh, Megan, you're asking about um, trying to find a candidate, is that correct? Uh, if that's the case, then yes. Um, OK, great job ads. So um, we are actually running uh, for some of our clients. It's It's been interesting this past year, um, year plus, is that we've started to run a lot more job ads for our clients than we ever have in the past. And yes, we're finding uh, LinkedIn and Facebook to be good avenues of it. but. A couple of things I want you to notice. Yes, you can target people based on interest. You know, if you know that uh, a typical person that would work at your company has certain characteristics, that's the way to target them. Uh, however, the language is super important too. So what I've noticed in my analysis of tons of job ads, uh, because I've actually given a presentation on this, is that so many job ads do exactly what businesses do, um, which is wrong, which is they talk about themselves. They say, uh, here's our company. Here's uh, your responsibilities. Um, this is what, what we sell, what we do. And it's so vanilla. What, how we found success is you have to sell the benefits of working for that company. Um, you know, like room for professional growth, you know, all those types of terms that you think, well, isn't that obvious? It's, it's not to everyone. So you have to put that kind of key messaging in your ads. We have found a much better click through rate, et cetera, when we put that kind of language in. Um, because, yes, you'll get down to the nitty gritty eventually and, and look at the actual duties of the job. But you have to start with that language about uh, all the benefits, uh, especially with hotel ads we've seen too and have been running. Uh, when you need someone to work, you're looking at like, yes, it's an easy location. We're easy on and off the bus stop. We, uh, we're right across from a daycare facility. You know, those types of things matter to prospective employees. Uh, next question, PJ. Suggestions how to respond to Facebook when they initially reject your ad, not because it was inappropriate, because uh, yes, <laughs> we have we have uh, encountered that. So one thing I didn't mention to everyone is that I'm just zooming out on PJ's question a little bit, is that um, we have had uh, an ad rejected because it claimed a health benefit, even though we're like, this is not really saying anything, but Facebook takes everything so seriously these days ever since 2016. So you just have to uh, broaden the language quite a bit. It's uh, it's just the unfortunate part. Um, I hope you can still find a way to broaden it without losing the essence of what you're trying to say, but you typically have to do that. There's also certain categories of Facebook ads that are flagged. So housing ads, for example, if you're trying to market a development or apartment or whatever, you are not allowed to uh, hone in too much in your target audience because of um, discrimination, discriminatory practices that have occurred on Facebook in the past. So just keep that in mind too. But again, back to PJ's thing is that oftentimes it, it just takes things a little bit too seriously, or literally, and you just have to broaden that uh, the text a little bit. Peter. 
Where might the holdup be? Perhaps planning order forms. I don't currently have a website. I'm trying to go cheap to start. Well, I, Peter, I guess what is your goal here? Are you trying to sell to other businesses or are you trying to sell to consumers? Oh, okay. yeah, again, um, Peter, I'm, regarding PJ's point is that sometimes it just takes certain things a little too seriously, like health claims. For example, you're not allowed to put health claims on a Facebook ad. So that's just one example that we've encountered that we said something that we didn't think was a health claim, but Facebook thought it. And, you know, we tried to appeal, didn't work. So we just had to change our language. David, I'm opening a boxing gym in Mass. I plan using Facebook to promote my gym. Do you see any advantages for using LinkedIn since it is more B2B? Well, um, here's an interesting thought, David, is that if you are trying to sell to, you know, corporate market, for example, you might be doing corporate retreats, right? Or you might want to partner with a business that this is part of their health and wellness package. Then you might want to target HR people, for example, on LinkedIn. But otherwise, I would think um, the majority of your efforts should be on the consumer market. Hi, Brian. I have a question. Uh, I actually do photography, and I notice a lot of people use Facebook. Now, is Facebook good for photography? Uh, I think in general, Facebook and Instagram makes sense, but it also depends on your target audience. So if your audience is on Facebook and Instagram, then it makes sense to be on those platforms. And that's the way I typically like to answer those questions. If your audience okay. is on those platforms, then be on those platforms. If your audience is on TikTok or, or you know, Triller or Byte or any of those other platforms, then be on those platforms. Okay, thank you. So I've run some Facebook ads and I have um, seemed to have pretty good uh, percentage of engagements and stuff. Um, people seem to be liking my Facebook page, but I'm also trying to get orders for the product and those, how do I, you know, convert those engagements and things into um people contacting me and ordering the product. Peter, I just scrolled up, so I'm sorry I missed your uh, message at 1246 there. I'm sorry about that. I see that uh, your engagements are about 68%, which is good, uh, but you just haven't gotten that next level. Um, so there's a couple things. Obviously, I haven't looked at your ads, but I I'm curious, is there that call to action? Is there that next step that's included in your ads, like book now? Um, probably not. It's mostly just um, getting people to come to my Facebook page. I, it's very uh, in the process, beginning level, and I really haven't put together the order form um, and stuff like that. Is that where you think I should be focusing my efforts? Yeah, I think you got to make things as easy as possible for your, your customers. So they come to your website, but then they don't really see a way to buy from you, so they just give up. That's typically what happens in the world. So you either do need a website where you have an e-commerce solution set up, or you can set up a store on Facebook itself. And then you can advertise those products on Facebook. And so when you advertise, then they can immediately buy within the Facebook ecosystem. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Kristen. Well, thank you, Brian. That was really um, some good information. Social media is changing all the time. So this is one of those things that we could you know, share and talk about all the time and always have new information. So we appreciate that. Um, we will be sending out the slides from today as well as a recording. Um, so we will do that following this presentation. Um, if there are no other questions, I think we can wrap it up. Thanks again, everyone. everyone. Don't hesitate question. to reach out. Thank you. Oh, is there time for one more question? Sure, go ahead. Um, where would you suggest that we kind of start for like market research on better, better targeting? Like I know it kind of depends on who your audience is, but if there's already kind of like evidence to prove some industries that are better for targeting certain individuals or demographics, so we have kind of like a starting point. 
Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to answer that question in 30 seconds or less. Uh, so it's interesting. So I work on a, a, a national team that um, has a market researcher involved, and they typically will do deep dives into this about where these audiences reside and so forth. Um, and then you can even use things like GIS, where you are mapping out where your audiences are and, and so forth. Um, but what I would just answer in the simplest way possible, and this is for everyone in the room, is that I would just budget like, for example, on Facebook, budget $25, do an ad for $5 a day for five days, okay? $25 hopefully shouldn't break the bank for you and see what you get from it. Try to learn from that, you know? You have an idea of who your audience is, what their interest, demographics, location, right? So target those people and run that campaign for five days and see how it goes. Was your engagement absolutely terrible or was it really good? You know, if it was terrible, are there things you could do to tweak it um, and then try tweaking it? And if it still doesn't work after a couple tries, then maybe that's not the right platform. But, it, you know, it's not too much of your time and hopefully not too much of your money to just run these little mini campaigns to test it out. Thanks for that question. Thank you. All right, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So with that, we will end our call today. Thank you so much, Brian. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.